Thanks for staying with us in Bill O'Reilly in the Miller Time segment tonight. Our pal Dennis is in New York City this evening, keeping a close eye on the Democratic Convention. He joins us now with some wisdom. Don't let me down, Miller. Billy, I hey, need wait, that wait, wisdom, wait, wait, wait. man. Let me give you some compliments on the quintessential factor segment. That last segment was like the baptism scene in Godfather. All five <laughs> families were done in in the one segment. Beautiful, my I got friend. Barzini, didn't I? I got Barzini, didn't I? Wow. Did you see Schuster? He couldn't believe Scarborough was lighting him up. Did you see how quick his mouth breathing was going at that point? <laughs> Look, the big story that's untold, except for us, is the media corruption in this presidential campaign. And it's just wrong. Because there's nobody watching the media, Miller. You know, everybody else is watchdogs and this and that. Not, not us. Well, God bless and, you and, for going out okay. there, Bill, because I wasn't Thank going you. out there. Because I'm telling you, if an idiot like, uh, the, 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 who's the professor from University of Colorado? If that Ward idiot, Churchill. If right. Ward Churchill brushed me aside, I'd have to throw with him. And if I made contact, I'd be the next teat that moron suckled on for the next decade. Yeah, he'd sue you, and that's right. All right, now, Michelle Obama last night, what did you think? Well, listen, um, they set the table for any time you're the second woman to speak on a night when Nancy Pelosi's the first woman to speak, that's like putting Lou Brock in the leadoff slot and you're in the three hole. You are going to plate some ribbies at that point. But uh, I thought she did herself well and that she was less uh, uptight than she usually is. She's usually, as my youngest son Marlon calls her, Michelle O'Drama. But I thought last night uh, she did okay, but I don't take her at face value because I remember the last time I did when she said it's the first time I'm proud of my country, they chided me not to take her at face value. So I don't. So I, I guess I don't believe last night either. It's somewhere in between. Now, do you think Michelle Obama matters in the campaign at all? Here's what matters, Bill. The meat, the soup bone quote in that whole thing was about her old man. That's a guy I'd like to meet. A cat, an anonymous cat who goes to bed at night, works to, you know, works his butt off to put his kids through college, all that stuff. And then she gets to the end of it, that heartfelt story. I don't know why they want to change that narrative to the state replacing the father as the patriarch of that family. Why should college be guaranteed to everybody? That was the very essence of that man's life, was putting those two kids or helping them get to college. She wants to step in at the end and say the government should be involved in that? I mean, that was the very essence of her father's existence. Why would she want to change that? Well, the struggle makes you stronger, and that's one of the points that I emphasize. If you're handed something, your life isn't going to be as worthwhile because it doesn't mean as much. Now, let's get on to uh, Joe Biden. Uh, what do you think of that selection? Well, listen, anytime you're pitching change and you, you know, sign up a guy, he seems like a nice enough guy, but he was first the senator when Nixon was still the president. I think he got, you know, recommendation for the hair plugs from Bill Proxmire, if I'm not mistaken. Here's the thing about Joe Biden. What I like about Joe Biden is Joe Biden would have walked out of Reverend Wright's church. He would have never abided that stuff. He would have set up, so this is crap, I'm gone. But the bad thing about Joe Biden is he always assumes the rest of the world is the room in front of him or the diner booth in front of him. He's too eager to please those people right in front of him because it makes him feel like Joe Biden. And sometimes I think he hedges on the overview to please that immediate room. So that's my problem with Joe. But he seems like a pretty decent guy. Do you agree with me that Hillary Clinton would have brought Barack Obama votes, but Joseph Biden will bring Obama zero? Listen, somehow the Dems and in their infinite wisdom have been able to take a woman who had 18 million votes over a one-year period and make sure she isn't either one or two on their ticket, and I thank them for that. I don't know what sort of wisdom that is, but God bless them. And you know something? That if I was McCain, I, I heard you chide Dick, uh, uh, what's the cat's name who used to be with Clinton? Paul Rove. Why can't I remember Paul. anybody tonight? No, the little guy. Oh, Lanny who, Davis. Nah, Lanny, Lanny Davis. There's a guy who used to be a pollster. His name's Dick. He's kind of poisoned, but he does have Morris, inside. Morris, Morris. Yeah, Dick, Dick Morris. Dick Morris. Uh, right. I think his choice of Kate Bailey Hutchinson's good because if Joe Biden starts laying into her in that VP thing, she's so sweet, he's going to look like an oaf. I like that move. Okay, now, you are Hillary Clinton's advisor this evening. Yeah. Dennis Miller has been, has been called in to go over the speech and to advise Senator Clinton, who's going to be up in about you know, an hour and a half or yeah. so, on what to say. You tell her what. 
Well, I got three options, Bill. First, I would hold up my valet parking ticket and my campaign debt and say, do you people validate? The second thing I would say is I got to wrap this up early. I got to go back and watch Miller on the O'Reilly Factor repeat at the hotel. Or the third thing I would say is, listen, you got to make sure this cat counts these delegates tomorrow because I've already been cheated on by the first black president, and I don't want potentially the second black president to also cheat on me. So that's what I would say. All right. That's all inside baseball, but what should she say to the folks? She's got to say stuff. You figure she's going to talk for about a half an hour. What should she say? I guess she's going to rope-a-dope, do the frabba-jabba. I guess when I see people crying at Michelle Obama last night, I think he can pretty much sell anything there. If I was here, though, at the end, the last thing I walked off stage is I'd say, hey, and you're not going to see me in another pantsuit to 2012. Good night. I'm out of here. <laughs> All right. So you, you're not even taking Hillary Clinton's speech very seriously. You didn't take uh, Michelle's. Obama speech. Do you, you Bill? Don't really think, Come on, do you? This is all. This is all. You know, here, that's an excellent question. It's all bloviating and it's all contrived, as I pointed out to Schumer yeah. and Davis and to Carl Rove. We know that. We know that. But I think a skilled writer can get a message across to a lot of people. Now, I don't know what message Hillary Clinton has in her tank, other than Bush is the devil and McCain's an old guy who's Bush in disguise. I don't know what else she's got. Well, she wants to come real. She to say, listen, this simultaneously blew my mind and hurt me over the last year. I'm going to put that aside and tell you for the good of this country and not for the good of me, because you always think I'm talking for the good of me, for the good of this country, I think you have to elect this guy. I don't agree with that, but if I was her, I'd cough to my hurt feelings, my pain up front, and I'd say, I'm going to get beyond that. You should try to get beyond it. God bless you. Hey, that's brilliant, Miller. And I'm not saying that facetiously. All right? That was a good analysis. Me? Dennis Miller, Did everybody. Did you just call me you? brilliant? I, I called that cat brilliant. This is Elon's time. i got to give it back to him.